evening. Thank you for joining us at St Andrew's Houghton Lascairn for our night prayer. We'll be using the Worship at Home booklet and you can print a copy from the web address that's showing. The Bible passages that we'll be reading this evening are uh, Matthew chapter 6 verses 1 to 6 and then 16 to 18, Psalm 31, 21 to the end and 2 Kings Chapter 2, verse 1, and then 6 to 14. And we begin our evening, as we always begin our night prayer, with this verse from Deuteronomy. The eternal God is your refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Let's pause and reflect on the day that's passed, our successes and our failures, as everything that we've done can teach us something useful for the future. And let's still our minds from the busyness of the day as we relax into the evening. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. So we'll start with our New Testament reading, which is from Matthew chapter 6. And uh, we're jumping about a, a little bit, going to read verses 1 to 6, and then jump on to verse 16. So chapter 6, Matthew chapter 6, starting at verse 1. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you'll have no reward from your Father in heaven. So, when you give to the needy, don't announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honoured by others. Truly, I tell you, They've received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your father, who sees what's done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand, they they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners, so as to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they've received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who's unseen. Then your Father, who sees what's done in secret, will reward you. And on to verse 16. When you fast, don't look sombre as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others their fasting. Truly, I tell you, they've received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that it will not be obvious to others that you're fasting, but only to your father, who is unseen, and your father, who sees what's done in secret, will reward you. And we move on to Psalm 31. And we're starting at verse 21 and reading to the end. So Psalm 31, verse 21. Praise be to the Lord, for he showed me the wonders of his love. When I was in a city under siege, in my alarm, I said, I'm cut off from your sight. Yet you heard my cry for mercy when I called to you for help. Love the Lord, all his faithful people. The Lord preserves those who are true to him, but the proud he pays back in full. Be strong and take heart, all you who hope in the Lord. 
and we say together, Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning and is now and shall be forever. Amen. And our Old Testament reading is from the second book of Kings, chapter 2. We read verse 1 and then we jump on to verse 6. And this is about Elijah and Elisha again. So verse 1. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on the way from Gilgal. And moving on to verse 6. Then Elijah said to him, said to Elisha, Stay here, the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. And he replied, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So the two of them walked on. Fifty men from the company of the prophets went and stood at a distance, facing the place where Elijah and Elisha had stopped at the Jordan. Elijah took his cloak, rolled it up and struck the water with it. The water divided to the right and to the left, and the two of them crossed over on dry ground. When they'd crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me, what can I do for you before I'm taken from you? Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit, Elisha replied. You've asked a difficult thing, Elijah said. Yet if you see me when I'm taken from you, it will be yours. Otherwise, it won't. As they were walking along and talking together, suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elisha saw this and cried out, My father, my father, the chariots and horsemen of Israel. And Elisha saw him no more. Then he took hold of his garment and he tore it in two. Elisha then picked up Elijah's cloak that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. He took the cloak that had fallen from Elijah and struck the water with it. Where now is the Lord, the God of Elijah? he asked. And when he struck the water, it divided to the right and to the left and he crossed over. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, this is a parting, a parting between teacher and pupil. However, the teacher was no ordinary teacher and the pupil was no ordinary pupil. It was customary at the time for the firstborn in a family to inherit double what the others inherited. So what Elisha was saying when he asked for a double portion was to be regarded as his son. Elisha saw Elijah as his father, not just as his teacher. There was a bond between them that was very strong. Not surprising if you think about it. God chose Elisha and he sent Elijah to tell Elisha he'd been chosen. They were both prophets of God who worked miracles in his name. And there were not too many prophets who worked miracles. Let's list a few of the miracles that, that they did. So Elijah uh, multiplied flour and oil for a widow. He shut the heavens, causing a drought. He brought rain to end a drought. He defeated the prophets of Baal when, <clears throat> when God set fire to a super soggy sacrifice. <laughs> Super soggy sacrifice. Sorry about that. He raised a widow's son from the dead. Elisha gave a miracle flow of oil for a widow. He multiplied loaves to feed a large crowd, raised a child from the dead, purified poison soup, he purified water. He healed Naaman of leprosy. Do any of these things sound familiar? Jesus turned water into wine. He brought Lazarus back from the dead. He fed 5,000 people with five loaves and two fish. And after the Sermon on the Mount, 
he healed a man of leprosy. The Holy Spirit was at work in Elijah and Elisha and they did great things, always looking to God for guidance. Well, we've just celebrated Trinity Sunday when we recognise that God is the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Jesus had the power of the Holy Spirit as part of his very being. What's so amazing is that Jesus wanted each of us to inherit to inherit the Holy Spirit, to inherit eternal life. There's a warning though. In Matthew's Gospel, Jesus was pointing out the folly of hypocrisy. The folly of trying to show everyone else how great you are in one way or another. When we're truly filled with the Holy Spirit, what we do is for the glory of God, not the glory of ourselves. That doesn't mean that we should belittle ourselves, though. It means that we should be asking God to lead us in our daily lives in a way that glorifies him, in a way that aids those who need aid, in a way that comforts those who need comfort. We might not be prophets like Elijah and Elisha, but we can still live a life worthy of God. We can still be guided by God through our, throughout our lives. Amen. We come to our time of prayer. Let's pray. Lord God, we praise you that day by day you're at work in our lives and capable of transforming them beyond all our expectations. We praise you for the way that, despite ourselves, you've called us to faith. We pray that you would continue to change us and use us in your work here on earth. May we always remember that it is you that empowers us, and may we use the gifts that you've given us wisely. Amen. And the prayer from this week's little net extra, a prayer for the first Sunday after Trinity. O oh God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully, mercifully accept our prayers. And because through the weakness of our mortal nature, we can do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace, that in the keeping of your commandments, we may please you both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we pray for those on our prayer list. We pray for John, Iris, Carol, Sharon, Karen, Susan, Geoffrey, Sophia, John and Pamela, Tony and Diane, Jane, Carol, Paul, Catherine, Anne, Rachel, Colin, Callie. And from the roads in our parish, we pray for those living in Trafford Close and Troon Avenue. And for the church family, we pray for David Gasking. We ask, Lord, that they may each know your love and so feel comforted. Amen. We'll have a short time now for you to bring your own prayers to God. Maybe it's an opportunity to reassess your, reassess your relationship with God and an opportunity to ask for his guidance in all you do. And join with me in the following prayers that you'll find in your Worship at Home booklet. 
merciful God, we entrust to your unfailing and tender care this night those who are ill or in pain or in distress of any kind, knowing that whenever danger threatens, your everlasting arms are there to hold us safe. Comfort and heal them and restore them to health and strength through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Be present, O merciful God, and protect us through the silent hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this fleeting world may rest upon your eternal changelessness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Visit this place, O Lord, we pray, and drive far from it the snares of the enemy. May your holy angels dwell with us in peace, and may your blessing be always with us, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus, for the night is at hand and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. And together we say, The Lord bless us and watch over us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly upon us and give us peace. Amen. Thank you for joining us here at St Andrews for our night prayer. And you can join us again tomorrow at 9am for morning prayer and 7pm for night prayer. Good night. God bless you.